In the previous question, um, Ali was allowed to repeat his orders each day. Now let's let's change that. What if Ali wants to eat something different every day? Okay, so he doesn't want to repeat any of the dishes he has tasted. So every day he wants to taste something new. So how does he pick? Obviously for day one, he's going to have, again, 10 options. But when it comes to day number two, since he uses one of those alternatives on day one, and he doesn't want to repeat it, he wants something new, then the number of choices he can make on day two diminishes to nine. In the same spirit on day number three, the number of options fall to eight and then to seven and then etc. On day number seven, it's four. Okay, so when you multiply all these, you get 10 factorial divided by three factorial is uh, the number of different uh, sequences that has distinct elements. No element is repeated here. Okay, so that we call sampling without replacement. So repetition is disallowed, but with order, we still care about the order. Okay, so this, as we have just seen, is going to give you n factorial divided by n minus k factorial ways to choose a sequence of k items out of a population of n and no reuse of items. That's why we call this without replacement. Now, something important here, obviously, n should be greater than or equal to k. Otherwise, you cannot do this. Okay, so for instance, consider Ali eating at this cafe with 10 different dishes. And the most he can do while tasting a new dish every day is eat there 10 consecutive days. If he wants to do that 11 days, it's impossible because he doesn't have an 11th option. He's going to run out of options. Therefore, the population N should be greater than or equal to the, the length of the sequence or the, the number of choices. Okay, so that's the condition where um, you can have sampling without replacement with order. Now, a slightly different question here. This doesn't fit in either sampling with replacement with order or without replacement with order. It's a little bit uh, different. What is the probability that from the second day on, Ali has something different from the previous day? Now, this is a different scenario. And now on day number one, again, he has 10 um, choices. And day number two, of course, he doesn't want to repeat the previous dish. So he has now nine choices. Now, when it comes to day number three, this is the difference from both scenarios we have just seen. Now, it, the question says different from the previous day only, okay? So different from day number two. Whatever he had on day number two, he doesn't want to choose it on day number three. But whatever he had on day number one, that comes back into the picture. It's now usable, okay? Now I lose one from day two, but I gain one from day one. So the number of choices Ali has is still nine on day number three. And this pattern continues, day four, five, six, and seven, Ali will have nine choices. So this will be 10 times nine to power six. Okay, so uh, you see this question, this uh, part D, let's say, does not really fit into the predefined formulation. So the message here, I guess, would be um, not all questions are going to fit into some of the predefined formulations that you can apply, just simply plug in the numbers. So you have to be smart about what the question means, what the scenario is, and how can I derive uh, the answer to that, okay? So you have to be careful 
Uh, this is not about memorizing formulas. This is about understanding the scenario and coming up with the solution accordingly. Okay, so let's look at this other question. Now assume Ali takes three of his friends to this cafe. Now they are a party of four, Ali plus three friends. Suppose they entered the cafe one by one, but randomly again. How many orders are there for their entry? Okay, so let's say um, the first one through the door is, let's say, Ali, and then friend number one, then friend number two, friend number three. This is one possible order. Or, for instance, friend number one enters first, and then Ali, and then friend number three, and then friend number two. This is another order. You see, um, intrinsically here, we cannot reuse people. For instance, here, Ali has already entered. He doesn't come out again and want to try, try to enter again. That's not the case here. If you enter, you stay in. So in, in this sequence, we are going to see all of those four people only once. And the length of the order is going to be four. So in, in first place to enter, we will have four possible choices. And for the next one, since one of the uh, party has already entered, the remainder three will select uh, one among them randomly, which means three alternatives. And after that, two, and finally, one is going to stay left behind and he is going to enter. Okay, so this gives you four factorial. Okay, so this is a special case of sampling without replacement with order. Okay, without replacement, we do not repeat or reuse the items, but we care about the order. If you change the order, um, the, the outcome is assumed to be different. And this we call permutation. What's the number of permutations or what's the number of orders you can have on a population of N? So that's essentially N selections out of um, a population of N without replacement with order, and that's essentially n factorial divided by n minus n factorial, which is one, which gives you simply n factorial. And that's the number of permutations on a population of n. 